Welcome everybody to this week's uh, OpenShift Commons briefing. We are really lucky to have um, Hugo Rivera, who's one of our senior certification um, managers for Red Hat with us this morning. And um, I know I advertise this as the how to get your apps, uh, containerized apps, um, enterprise ready and Red Hat certified but it really is all about building a trusted container system, ecosystem. And that's what we're trying to do here with OpenShift 3 and the upcoming release. So we're pleased to have um, a great strategy here at Red Hat for making our containers trusted. And I'm gonna let Hugo take it off and tell us all about that this morning. Thanks, Ann. Um, and hello, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm part of uh, the ecosystem team here at Red Hat. We work closely with partners in uh, creating uh, healthy, robust uh, product ecosystems around uh, our different platform offerings. And today I'm going to talk about our efforts around containers, which is obviously a, uh, a technology of great interest uh, to our customers and our partners. And uh, based on customer demand, uh, for a trusted container ecosystem, uh, we put together some uh, offerings uh, that we hope will be of interest to you. We're going to start with a, a bit of intro about certification at Red Hat and uh, clarified terminology. You might have heard uh, about Red Hat certification and the concept of certified skills, so people that become a certified Red Hat system administrator, for example. But what you may not know is that we also have uh, a large organization that works with uh, commercial vendors to certify their products on the Red Hat platform. Uh, this is a collaborative effort. And what we aim to do is to assure our mutual customers that uh, first, the technology stack that, they've been the, that they're going to deploy has been tested and validated. Uh, a lot of our customers like uh, an open platform. Uh, they um, uh, like Linux, of course, uh, and, and uh, complementary technologies, but they want to make sure that the pieces have been tested together and they're not going to be the first one uh, paving the, you know, a way for, for deployment. And the second aspect of certification is uh, an assurance that uh, the stack that our, part, our customers are deploying is fully supported both by Red Hat and our partners. So uh, this is the principle behind uh, our ecosystems. And uh, I'm going to talk about what we're doing specifically in the context of uh, containers. So applying the principles I just mentioned to container certification, uh, the first question is, why are we doing this? And from our perspective, it's really all about trust. If, if you follow the news around containers, you might have seen a recent report about uh, analysis uh, of the um, uh, Docker Hub, um, and you know, a company called um, Banning Ops found that over 30% of the images in the official repos are susceptible to um, security attacks. You know, things like shell shock or, or heart bleed. Um, so this is a big cause of concerns for customers who like containers, they love the uh, simplicity for deployment. Uh, but they want to make sure that they're not going to introduce any security risk in their production environment. So what we want to do with container certification uh, is to assist with these three questions. Uh, can you guarantee the origin of a container? Do you know where it comes from? Um, can you uh, verify that uh, it's been tested on the target platform? Uh, because, you know, the containers can uh, incorporate a number of different runtimes. And uh, it is important that a specific application runtime uh, has been ver verified on the host OS uh, and that we uh, know for sure that the, the different pieces are working together. Uh, and finally, and most importantly, is the stack fully supported by all vendors involved? So containers are a great platform. Uh, they've been embraced by developers uh, and getting a lot of traction. We want to make sure that uh, we take that same uh, technology to the enterprise space, much like we've done with other uh, technologies uh, like you know, Linux and OpenStack. So th this is an example of what I'm talking about. Um, 
I, I use this Postgres, PostgreSQL as, as uh, an application, but you can uh, do similar searches on the Docker Hub. Uh, if a customer is interested or has a dependency for a commercial application that requires PostgreSQL, and they do a search, uh, this is the, the results that, that you can find. Uh, you know, over 400 different repositories, uh, different image names. It is hard to know um, all the process behind producing these images. So, you know, a customer may be wondering, who, who built this? And can I trust this? Does this have production quality? Uh, how was it tested? Uh, if I'm going to deploy in a specific uh, platform like Red Hat Enterprise Linux, do we know if this has been tested on that target? Uh, and uh, who maintains it? If there are bugs, if there are issues, if there are security vulnerabilities, do I know who to contact to get a, a fresh image? So uh, we're trying to address these issues. And uh, you know, by the way, we, we like what Docker is doing. We work closely with Docker, uh, the project, and, and the company. Uh, but we understand that our, our enterprise partners have some very unique needs that we're trying to address through certification. So what do we do uh, with certification? Basically, we provide assurance that uh, the container is coming from a trusted source. So we have established a relationship with the container developer and maintainer. Uh, we guarantee that the container can be safely deployed across uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux platforms. And I'll talk a little bit more about this, but you know, if you use the, the RHEL uh, runtime, um, what we offer is package it once correctly as a container, and then you have a broad addressable market for your product. We also assure that the platform is free from known vulnerabilities uh, because we check that um, uh, the dependencies that are being used in a container image uh, have not uh, been reported to have a, a vulnerability issue. And finally, uh, this is backed up by collaborative support. So we have a support relationship with the uh, company that is behind this container. And if issues come up in production, we can work together to fix them. And you see here in the upper right hand um, uh, corner, we have a certified technology logo. So for um, any of our partners who go through this process, they'll be able to use this product alongside with uh, their application. Now, as I mentioned, the, the goal is to uh, certify a partner container image and uh, rely on, on a single application delivery model for containers across a whole portfolio from Red Hat. So we have uh, enabled uh, our different products to deploy containers. Uh, we did it a while ago with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. Then with the uh, release, a, a purpose-built product to run containers, which is Red Hat Enterprise Linux Atomic Host. And of course, we have OpenShift um, that in its uh, version 3, it's all based on containers. So we're uh, providing a, a broad range of deployment options, which translates into a broad range of deployment targets for your own products. Uh, and, and the beauty of this is, you know, if the application is built and packaged uh, in, in a standard way, according to best practices, then the same container image can be taken and deployed across all of these options. All right, so let me let me switch gears here and give you um, some examples. So I'm going to escape this and open my browser. Um, first of all, I'm going to show you the, uh, uh, the user interface uh, that our partners have access to. Uh, we offer to our partners a tool to handle certifications. And what you see here is uh, the, the user interface. We also have a command line interface, but I'm showing you the user interface for uh, managing certifications. Now you see that we actually have multiple certification types. So our intent is to have a single tool that can manage your different certification processes. So. Uh, our hardware vendors use the same process to certify their hardware. We have uh, partners working in, in the OpenStack space for infrastructure as a service, and they use the same tool. Uh, and now we've added container certifications um, as um, another path uh, for uh, working with Red Hat. 
Um, so uh, you have some examples here that I've used uh, submitting um, images. So I'm just going to click on this and see. So basically, you know, through this tool, um, uh, the submitter uh, uploads both the image and the Docker file. Uh, you see an image here that we've been testing uh, about 236 meg uh, when it was tested and submitted. Um, and then, you know, uh, I'll show you a report in a second, but basically uh, the way the process works is uh, you take an existing container and you upload it into a certification service from Red Hat. Uh, we have a set of automated tools that will uh, introspect that container image. We'll look at what layers it has. We'll look at what the dependencies it's using. And uh, we generate a report um, automatically that then you can go and check. So let me give you an example of the our report here. Uh, so this is an example of a container submission that has uh, a couple of failures. So uh, there's a test to make sure a container does not have a security vulnerability. And in this case, the image that was submitted had a failure. So I can go in and see what happened. And basically, and this is kind of a, a wordy, but um, it, it shows you that there's some packages down here that have some security issues. Uh, we analyze the content against our own security advisories from Red Hat so we can see that there's a specific security advisory that has uh, the reported problems with it, this package. Um, and so we hide the same issue on, on a few packages that are included in that image. So the submitter can go and review that uh, advisory by this string and say, okay, I want to see what the problem was. And then they'll be able to take remedial action and update their image accordingly. Um, there are a couple of other tests we're, do we're doing here. For example, we test that the base image is supported by Red Hat. So if you build an application that uses uh, a different runtime, for example, Debian, uh, Red Hat cannot really stand behind that, uh, those libraries and that create a support issue for uh, enterprise customers. So we make sure that whatever image was built to uh, create a container uh, happens to be an image that a base layer that Red Hat can support. Uh, the supported packaging format here has to do with the right Docker version. So we make sure that the tools that were used to package a given container uh, come from a version that is supported by Red Hat. Uh, and finally, we check that if you uh, have Red Hat dependencies or layers, that you're not making changes to those packages that come directly from us. Uh, because if you do, that invalidates our support. So, for example, here, uh, there was a, 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 red, uh, a Red Hat provided file that was modified in this image, and uh, we report a file name. Uh, we report the RPM. Uh, so, basically, this um, it has to be fixed because otherwise this would invalidate Red Hat support on the customer end. Uh, in addition to the mandatory tests that give you a, a pass or fail status, uh, we also add some notifications. And basically, we're letting you know that it might be uh, more recent content or a more recent version of certain packages that you use. So for example, uh, this application uh, is using a, a package called DZ Data, uh, and this is the version and we're just letting you know that, by the way, there's a newer version of that package. Uh, you can still certify it as is because you may have verified that that exact version is the one your application needs. But we're letting you know that you know there's more recent content you, that you may want to incorporate. So you know that's an overview of the certification report that you get, and. Uh, you know, after reviewing the, the errors and uh, making the necessary changes, you can submit your image again. I think I have a different image here of um, a certification has passed. So all of those four texts that I mentioned completed successfully. And uh, we have a, a warning here. In this case, just like I mentioned before, uh, there's more recent content for that package, TC data. But uh, again, from our perspective, it's just a warning. Since this does not contain a vulnerability issue, 
uh, it's okay to release this image for consumption, uh, even though it's using a slightly older version of, of one of our packages. So that's, um, in a nutshell, um, you know, a summary of, of the type of information that you get if you submit your uh, container for uh, certification. And as I mentioned, you know, there's a, a user interface here that you will use uh, to send your container over, and then that report gets uh, generated automatically. Uh, and I'm showing you the GUI. We're working on the command line option as well, so that you can incorporate the same type of operations into your CI or CD environment, and you can check for uh, pass fail automatically. Uh, and that's going to be coming shortly. So let me. I, th I think it was a question on blue jeans. I don't know if I need to uh, check for. All right. Okay, so I see there's a question about build best practices building Docker images. Um, so I'll, I'll get back to, to thanks for raising that, Pablo. I'll, I'll make sure I cover that in in the in the slides. Um, let me go back here to presentation mode. Oops. Now, there's a, uh, a topic closely related to certification, which is around the distribution of those certified containers. And uh, we have created the uh, infrastructure to allow commercial software vendors to make their containers available for a broad audience. We are not uh, making uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, container images available on the Docker Hub right now uh, because it doesn't have the type of uh, control that we need for our, uh, our own software and our entitlements. So what we offer to our partners is a, a service called the Red Hat Container Registry. And this is available for all certified containers and it's actually hosted on OpenShift, uh, which is you know the platform you all know very well. Uh, what we give you is the software that can handle uh, the Docker distribution, and uh, within it, uh, it takes care of uh, managing the layers from the right sources. So uh, our ISVs, or software partners, own the distribution of their bits, and we are just providing the infrastructure. And this registry is integrated with the certified catalog. So. You would set up uh, an account on OpenShift, um, or you, know, you probably already have one, uh, and you will give uh, access to the Red Hat certification service so that once the image succeeds uh, and get a, a pass report, that image gets uploaded automatically to that registry and is ready for distribution. So um, any customer of yours or any new potential customer that wants to get access to that certified image, we just do a Docker pull from uh, your registry instance, and they would get access to those bits, um, you know, pretty much using the standard Docker commands. This is integrated with the Red Hat certified catalog. So uh, we have, let me go back to um, my browser here. Oh. We have in our customer portal uh, a destination where we publish uh, certified products. Uh, it's divided into certified hardware, software, and cloud uh, because we cover a broad range of products. Uh, you can see that we allow customers to browse uh, by software, hardware. They can browse by different ecosystems. Uh, we're going to open a new section for containers here where we can list uh, all of those commercial software products that are packaged in a container format. So, um, and this is the prime destination for uh, the Red Hat customers um, to find information about uh, you know, the, the ecosystem around Red Hat products. So this gives exposure to your product to uh, a broad range of potential users. And uh, what we will do in the listing is include the Docker pull command. So you'll be able to, uh, if anybody finds your, your product listing, they can just 
copy the Docker pull command, paste it into the system, and you know, with one line command, get access to that application. Now, um, what does this mean to you, uh, and why should you pursue uh, this type of work with Red Hat? And uh, when I talk about this, I, I talk uh, from both perspective of the software vendor and the customer. So if you're a software vendor, uh, it, the, the reason for pursuing uh, containerization of your applications is to achieve a greatly simplified application delivery model. So a simple one-line command will now allow your customers to have your application up and running. And you gain a lot more control over the application runtime because you're going to package it and configure it with exactly the right dependencies so that it's ready to go. Uh, the whole process of installation and configuration is a lot less error-prone error because it's greatly simplified. Uh, you don't need to tell your customers to go and look at uh, a lengthy installation and configuration guide. Uh, you're going to configure your product exactly the way you want it to be used. And uh, your customers are going to be deploying your product with exactly the right uh, system dependencies that you tested um, in, in, in your own environment. And finally, it's a trusted enterprise platform. So, and Docker is a great technology, but uh, it is important to uh, make sure that it's um, under control when it comes to vulnerabilities and security risks uh, in, in the images themselves. Um, so by having a, a formal process that you go through, we're raising the level of assurance. And on the consumer side, for uh, our mutual customers, you know, they benefit from the application deployment, just like we mentioned. Uh, the time to get applications up and running is greatly reduced, and they get a better support experience, right? Uh, less calls to support because they don't know how to uh, install and configure. Uh, less calls to support because they have the wrong uh, dependencies. And uh, if they do run into issues with production, we have a way to collaborate and overall uh, provide them a better support experience. Uh, and again, it's all about trust. So, you know, they have access to a pool of applications uh, in, in a container format that uh, they know have been validated on the right targets. And as I mentioned before, our goal from Rehab perspective is to uh, give a broad range of deployment options. Of course, OpenShift uh, first and foremost, because that's, you know, ideal environment for uh, development applications at scale. Uh, but if customers want to deploy this uh, in bare metal um, or in virtual machines, they can do it as well. And of course, they can always uh, pursue cloud deployments, uh, including you know, public cloud with uh, some of our cloud partners or their own private cloud. Now, let me talk a, a bit about the, uh, the mechanics and the workflow that is involved in this. So uh, we have a, a program called Red Hat Connect for Technology Partners, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, this is the uh, destination where we offer the resources and um, the workflow that you pursue uh, for certification purposes. We have tools to assist with the build process, uh, although this is, is really for people developing on other platforms. We have uh, a container development kit that includes uh, Vagrant boxes and Vagrant images uh, so that you can create containers based on a Red Hat platform, even if you're developing on, say, Mac OS or Windows. Uh, we have the container certification steps that I covered already. And then we have the distribution attained through the Red Hat Container Registry service. So um, our goal is to guide uh, our commercial software vendors through a, a simple process so that they can go through these steps and quickly get an application out for consumption. Let me spend a couple of minutes talking about the program itself. 
uh, Red Hat Connect for Technology Partners is a uh, Red Hat program for commercial vendors who have products that get deployed on or with the Red Hat platforms. So uh, you can be a traditional ISV, you can be a, 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 an IHV, an OEM, uh, but if you have a product that uh, gets deployed alongside a Red Hat product, then uh, this is an important destination for you. What we offer is uh, access to Red Hat software. We have roadmap information. We have uh, content for uh, developers as well as for people conducting marketing activities. And we're grouping uh, content into zones, uh, which you can think of as interest groups. So uh, right now we have four zones. Uh, we have one specifically for containers. We have other zones for areas like middleware and um, uh, OpenStack, and through these zones, we present uh, the workflow that I mentioned in kind of three simple steps, align, build, and certify. So, you know, come along, uh, make sure we are aligned, make sure that um, uh, this is the right technology that your product should be deployed with, uh, build your application, and then proceed with certification. Uh, let me break to my browser again. Uh, yeah, so this is this is the site we have connect for technology partners. Uh, this is the container uh, zone. Um, so as I mentioned, there are steps that you can follow to certify your application. So we, we built a um, uh, the workflow here for you. We have information about why certify, which uh, covers some of the uh, content that I, I went through uh, in this presentation. And they have a number of resources. Uh, so there was a question about uh, best practices for uh, containerizing applications. So we're posting our resources here. Uh, you have technical information here about containers, get started, uh, you know, portability, um, introduction to Docker, and so on. Uh, and then we have um, things that you can download. You can request software access. So uh, again, you know, if you're working in OpenShift, you already have access to a lot of these resources. Uh, but for those partners working off, uh, you know, out of OpenShift, they may need to deploy some pieces themselves. Uh, we have the Vagrant boxes and other tools that I mentioned that uh, help you develop if you're using um, other uh, platforms like uh, Mac or Windows. And then we have some other information here. Uh, updates, blogs, verification, and so on. So, uh, you know, it's a good destination. Uh, I think it's, it complements well what you already get access to uh, within the OpenShift framework, and we're working closely with the OpenShift team you know, to make sure that all of the content uh, is, is fully aligned. Um, all right, I'll, I'll go back to the questions, and thanks for, for tracking these questions. Let me, let me finish with the slides, and then I'll make sure we cover all of, all of your your questions. Um, I, I've talked before about uh, the ability to engage in collaborative support. Uh, we think this is one of the big benefits of engaging with us on certification. And the goal here is for us and our technology partners to um, collaborate to address support issues on behalf of mutual customers. So, um, you know, without such an agreement, if a customer calls Red Hat and uh, we believe that the application is the issues related to the application, we would tell the customer, sorry, you know, we're taking it as far as we can, go and contact your application vendor, uh, or vice versa. You know, a customer would, would call um, uh, your company and you think this is a Red Hat issue, you know, in, in the old days, you would tell the customer, sorry, call your um, operating system vendor. Uh, we have established a way for our support organizations to reach out to each other so that uh, your support team would have direct access to Red Hat uh, Global Support Services uh, and vice versa. So if you're in troubleshooting, we believe that the issue may be related to one of those certified applications. We can reach out to uh, your company on behalf of a customer uh, and you have the same privileges. Um, so again, this is great value for mutual customers. It reduces the finger pointing. 
um, and uh, you know it, it allows for a direct engagement path that would overall you know help increase quality of the of the whole stack. Uh, we use a multi-vendor support framework called TSA Net for this. So uh, if some of your companies are already part of TSA Net, then you may already benefit from this. Uh, but if not, and you decide to join our program, uh, we will give you access to this framework at no additional cost. So uh, that's the end of uh, my presentation, the end of the slides. Uh, my personal call to action is if you're a, an independent software vendor, uh, you're probably already working with OpenShift and, and um, uh, you know, you're getting a lot of uh, valuable resources there. Uh, if you want to know specifically about certification flow that I mentioned, uh, you can reach out to me directly or join us through uh, the container zone at connect.redhat.com uh, where we can um, get you started on, on the process. Um, and if you happen to be an enterprise uh, user of containers, uh, we encourage you to ask your um, software providers to for certified containers. Um, and you know, and inform them that uh, there is this process through Red Hat that can help increase overall quality of the container ecosystem. And with that, let me let's flip over into those questions because yep. there's quite there's quite a few here. Which is all right. We go up to so the me... top there. Um, okay. I think Chris. Chris answered Pablo's first question around best practices, but if you have any more advice around that. All right, so see, when is Atomic Platform going to be supported on public or in private cloud based on OpenStack? Um, is that question specifically about the Atomic Post? I know, Chris, you, you had some um, comments there. Yeah, I think. Arcadia and I addressed that one. Um, you probably want to start with Michael Virgil's questions. Those yeah. are the ones I haven't asked. All right, so how sure five versions handle customer ISV responsibility? Um, so th this is something we're looking into. W what we do today is we inform the vendor if there are uh, updates, specifically if there are vulnerabilities, uh, and is we it is the vendor responsibility to, um, you know, proactively release a new image. Um, so, you know, we depend on, on the software provider to update and recertify once they patch the, the image. Uh, we're looking into ways that we can connect on the customer side and be able to complete the flow, if you may, to issue the same type of notifications to the end consumer of that image. Um, so, but I think that that's not something that's fully implemented yet. Um, so at, at this point, we do have the workflow to tell the vendor to update the image. Um, and we rely on, on, on those vendors to take proactive action and notify their customers as well. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, Michael. Yeah, it does. Thank you. So if one is um, becomes, uh, like for example, if there's a vulnerability to one of the base images, uh, does this website, does it hide it so that no one can pull it? Does it guard against additional? Um... Right, so, so, so we're, we're, we're looking into that uh, and, and whether we, we hide it completely or we put a warning. Uh, and, and again, there are two ways for images to be found. One is we have a catalog that I show that it's a, a, a website uh, where you can search and find information. So we can certainly add a warning there that there's that an image has a vulnerability issue. Um, you will also be able to find these images doing a standard Docker search command. And uh, I didn't talk much about the, the how search works on the Red Hat platform, but uh, by default, if you're running uh, on, on a, one of our many uh, container-enabled uh, platforms and you do a Docker search, you hit the Red Hat registry first. That includes all of these uh, partner images. Uh, so to be able to do, for example, a Docker search for, you know, I gave example PostgreSQL and uh, see at the top of the results the um, certified partner images. So uh, in, in that case, we're kind of bound by the Docker 
um, CLI and what information is displayed there. So, um, you know, we're working with um, the Docker project to improve what gets portrayed in the Docker CLI and be able to issue uh, the right, uh, you know, warning there. Uh, we, we can work with the vendor, and if the vendor agrees, they can pull the image completely from Docker pool. But again, it is their application, so it's ultimately the vendor decision whether to pull it off or not. Okay. All right, thank you. So, so Hugo, uh, Pablo asks a good question or a variation on, on the questions that's been asked before, but is there a, a possibility uh, or any plan to offer the review process for our enterprise customers so that they can verify their in-house images? So, so the answer is yes. Yeah, the satellite team is, is looking into this uh, to use the same technology for scanning images. Um, and again, right now, what we do is we look into our own security advisories. We're looking into areas like OpenSCAP and be able to um, uh, to do a direct analysis against, um, and I forgot the name of the site that gives you a feed, an oval, oval feed for vulnerabilities. Um, so we're, we're looking into expanding that offering and we're doing that in coordination with the satellite team. So. Um, that's you know that will be the vehicle for be able to do that type of, uh, of analysis on, on the customer side and uh, in-house images. That's that's awesome. And Arcady has one more question here. Um, after a containerized app is certified and some of its dependencies have new version, what happens to the support of a certified app? And Arcady, you're off mute now, so if you'd like to right. speak to that. So again, we're we're notifying. Uh, the partner if there's newer content, but we don't think that um, that in and by itself is recent enough to invalidate an image. Uh, we know that, you know, it, with containers in so many layers, there are different pieces that move at its own pace. So, you know, we don't expect people to be rebuilding images at a fast rate necessarily. I mean, some vendors may if they have a good CI environment and they're able to consume updates uh, automatically. Uh, other vendors may be more cautious and, and just uh, pick up updates, um, you know, on, on a case by case. Um, again, you know, it is really the, the, the vendor's own prerogative uh, on what they consider a uh, tested and validated stack. Uh, all we want to make sure is that uh, it doesn't contain vulnerabilities. I don't know, yeah. Arcadi, if that answers your, your question. Almost. Uh, the the reason, <laughs> second reason is that you know, uh, as uh, underlying uh, uh, library dependency move forward, you basically you know you can recertify it, and then you have now multiple version of the application. So, yep. is there a, a recommended kind of versioning uh, control, or you know, what is the mechanism recommended for the apps? So, so we have some naming recommendations for images and, and by the way this is going to be an area of, of uh, where we're going to see dramatic change uh, because you know as I mentioned before in, in the old days there was a, a kind of a clean separation between the different layers and you know different vendors were revving at their own pace now you're combining everything which is great for consumers but it, it brings in this version management <laughs> Uh, to the front. Um, so, you know, ultimately the, it's, it's the application vendor who, uh, you know, needs to define a policy on how to uptake, uh, you know, layer updates and how to incorporate it into versioning. Um, and they ultimately own the, the, the versioning uh, mechanism and scheme for their specific products. Uh, we're going to be proactive doing notifications on layer changes. Uh, and uh, something I forgot to mention, we are uh, working on defining standard metadata for containers uh, through the usage of labels so that you, you can include version and information in a somewhat standard manner um, by using specific label types. Um, so you can include a label with you know, the vendor name, the application name, the application version, um, mm -hmm. and then you know, re revise that label uh, as you issue new images. So, um, so again, you know, we have some guidelines on how to do naming. Uh, we're not getting too much into versioning uh, prescriptions yet. 
Uh, although we'd like to hear your feedback, uh, Arkady, and, and see, you know, how do you think is going to impact your, your own uh, product release cycle and what kind of things you'd like to see offer um, as part of the platform? All right, then. Are there any other questions that anyone might have um, while we still have Hugo on the line here? And I have a quick one. This is Michael again. Uh, is there a like a ISV administrator's dashboard uh, so I can manage all my certified image? I can look uh, at a dashboard-like view and just kind of see the state and status of my images and see which ones I need to take action on, or is a report set generated available around auditing, auditing um, and the state and status of my certified images? Yeah, so, so the... Um... You know, I, I show the, the user interface for the tool, which uh, is kind of acts as the kind of dashboard that, that you're mentioning. Uh, it gives you all of the certifications in flight and uh, even across different products in case you happen to be a multi-platform, um, you know, uh, provider. Um, it, the notifications right now are, are done by email to the contact we have who submitted the application. Um, we have a feature request to get that notification included in the in the dashboard as well to give you a single pane of of, of um, control. Um, but I don't think it's there yet. But again, that that's the intent. Where all of all of the things related to your certifications, both completed and in progress, uh, are going to be displayed there. Okay, great, thanks. All right then. I'm not seeing. Oops, maybe one more question here. That seems to have answered everybody's questions, Hugo. There's lots more information um, on the partners, customer partner site as well, as um, Chris mentioned earlier. So on the connectredhat.com and the, under zones and containers, there's a whole slew of information and a couple of videos as well to watch. So I want to make sure that um, if you have any questions at all, you can um, feel free to contact Hugo. Um, or post them to the Commons um, mailing list, and we'll make sure we hook you up with um, Hugo um, and the appropriate folks on the certification team. So thanks very much, Hugo, for taking the time this morning, and this video will be posted shortly. Yeah, and I, I included I included my um, email address in the chat. Uh, Diane is H Rivero. That's H R I V E R O at redhat.com. Uh, people want to contact me directly. Uh, I recognize some of the voices here on the Q&A, so happy to have that, that discussion individually. But if anybody wants to offer feedback, again, you know, this is an exciting uh, time and, and opportunity for us. Uh, a lot of uh, room for improvements and, and refinements. So, you know, interested in hearing what you, what you have to suggest. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending, and we'll see you next week. All right. Take care. Thanks.